do it lightly. Seeing that at 7 o'clock, I'd like to call the Summersworth School Board meeting from uh, for September 24th, 2024 to order. Can I have a um, roll call, please? Maggie Larson. Yes. Carrie Clark. Yes. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Yes. Crystal D. St. Croix. Yes. Marsha Brown. Yes. Barbara Wentworth. Yes. Bridget Jameson. Yes. Gemma Soldati. Yes. Okay. Can you all join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor for comments by visitors this evening. Any comments by visitors? Um, seeing none, we'll move to board members. Any initial comments by board members this evening? All right, seeing none. Uh, the consent calendar has our minutes from our um, school board meeting on the 9th and non-public on September 16th. Uh, what's the uh, wish of the board to accept the consent calendar as presented? I motion to accept the consent calendar as presented. Second. Right. Any discussion about anything on the consent calendar? Again, there's only two items, but... Happy to discuss any meeting minutes? No? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 The consent calendar is adopted. Should we just move on to reports or to the recognition? Oh, for Steve? Oh, no, no. I'd be happy if everyone's here. No, they're not. Oh, then let's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we have, we're deciding about which one to do first, but since we're kind of waiting for people, um, we will go to uh, the, mo the board chair report, which is, oh, you know what? I'm gonna, nope, we're gonna pause that. <laughs> we're gonna pause that, and we're going to have a special appreciation and recognition this evening, and I'll turn it over to the superintendent, Shea. Steve Hodson uh, was recently named the NHIAA Division Three Athletic Director of the Year for 2023-2024 um, as a coach, as a teacher, uh, as an administrator. Um, I count myself to be among those very fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with him in his 25th year. Not only day-to-day -day everything we expect from an athletic director and a teacher and a coach, but someone who's so committed to this community. We have three speakers that uh, would like to take a little time uh, to recognize Steve and thank him for his good work um, and, and being honored this way. I believe our high school principal, Chris Tebow, is first. Thank you, Steve. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Uh, Chris Thibault, principal at Summersworth High School. Uh, and I'm joined by uh, coach Jeremy Lambert and his daughter, Abby Lambert. Uh, I'm here tonight just to say a few quick words about Steve. Um, I wonder, do I make him stand up yes. alongside you? Okay. Yes, yes. Oh, he's gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> he asked if there was a truck involved tonight. I, I, I said, I, I didn't think so, but you know, you never know, you never know. <laughs> Uh, so I, I will say I'm, I'm honored to stand up here and say just a few words in thanks and appreciation of Steve. Uh, he deserves every bit of the recognition and honor of being named D3 Athletic Director of the Year and really so much more. Um, yeah, he's, he's an awesome athletic director, but he is also a teacher leader, a coach, uh, friend to many, and someone who has dedicated his, his professional career to the students and community of Summersworth. He takes pride in this city. Um, his commitment to our schools, his willingness every single day to go above and beyond for the students of our school district is, is something that I, I deeply and genuinely admire in Steve. Um, so thank you and congratulations, Steve. <laughs> so we had a, another student who was gonna come tonight but was sick but wrote a few words, so I'm gonna read this uh, as uh, Lily Hamilton. Uh, as you may know, Mr. Hudson has been named the Division Three Athletic Director of the Year. I could not name any other person more deserving of this. Uh, Hodson has now co coached me for four years in volleyball, and I couldn't have asked for a better coach. How much time and effort he puts into every single team throughout the schools is crazy. Uh, thank you for everything you have done for the volleyball team, all the athletics, the school, and the community. We don't say it enough, but we appreciate you. All right, I'm next. Um, Coach Hodson is more than a, an athletic director to the Summersworth Middle and High School. 
He's coached volleyball for many years and has gotten a championship on his back. He's coached track and field. And as you know, if you know Hodson, then you know he's got moves on the basketball court. Straight butter, baby. <laughs> but besides that, Hodson has also managed showing up to middle school and high school events as the athletic director, running from one game to another, or even from volleyball practice out to soccer. Hodson, in fact, is proud of how much he runs around. Just ask him how many steps he's got. He would be very happy to share. Um, but Hodson is always there to support our athletes, too, if you can find him in his office anyways. I swear he hides from me. Um, but he's a trusting adult for many students looking for guidance. So yeah, he's more than deserving of this award. All right, I'm, I'm Coach Lambert. I'm sorry I was late. Uh, you know, I ran practice long, so if any of your kids played for me, you know that's a normal thing. I'm sorry, it's a big week. Um, you'll handle the complaints later, right, I'm sure. All right, so uh, thank you so much for having me. I am absolutely honored to talk about Steve Hudson. Um, I don't know if I understand everything that he does for the students in the school, but I can tell you that I truly appreciate it. He wears many hats as an educator, as a mentor, as a teacher, not just in the classroom, but um, providing guidance for the students, um, caring for them, and being more than just an administrator in the building. Um, kind of to put it bluntly, he's their biggest fan. And it doesn't take much to realize kids grow to believe in themselves when they know someone believes in them. And he does that constantly. For every kid that wears top or blue, he is their biggest fan. So. If there is someone that is deserving of this type of recognition for just the stuff that I see him do just for sports, and I know it's only a small, small piece of him out there fighting for the kids, supporting the kids, getting them everything they need from every piece of their lives, he is absolutely deserving of it. And I guess to put it bluntly, I'm a Steve Hodgson fan. <laughs> so you are absolutely deserving of this. I am honored to be part of the team that he has brought in. So thank you so much for honoring him. He definitely deserves it. Thank you. So um, thank you, everyone. Uh, I am absolutely humbled. Um, I obviously have to thank some people. Um, I couldn't even be in this position without my awesome family, my wife and my daughters. Um, I have a, a, a caring administration that supports me every step of the way. I have an awesome school board that anything I ask for, they, you know, take in consideration and then uh, get Katie mad and then we... Um, Where's my I thanks? Mean, um, <laughs> so, uh, and then I have coaches that honestly make my job um, easy because of the amount of work that they put in for the kids and the amount of effort that they put in behind the scenes makes me look good. So. Um, Thank you, everybody. I, like I said, I'm, I'm deeply humbled and greatly appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peyton and Jen, for being here tonight. I think the Carringtons may also be here in support of uh, our athletic director, partially. All right, board members. Board member Brown. I just have to re reaffirm, because I've been helping with the track program and watching Coach Hodston in action, everything that everyone just said is so true because he is so giving and he is so present and so caring of all of the student body. And I just so happy to have you get this award, Steve. Great. Congrats again. Great. Yep. Um, congratulations to you and congratulations and shout out to your family because um, I know what it takes and it's a lot and i was taking some pictures so i'll email them to you later <laughs> i just want to take a minute and say thank you i have several children in the school district and one that's already gone off and then to college and we've had first-hand knowledge of how great you are with the students in um, athletics you know, and you give a lot too. And someone mentioned about um, being a safe place for students to come to and they feel safe around you, that's super important. So thank you for that. Um, Coach, you are 
probably more appreciated than you realize through all of these words. I think they'll resound for many years. And after students have graduated and how they live their life, you've influenced so much. You are like the fabric of our district. There's like people that just lay a foundation that makes our life easier as a community and beyond appreciative of all those hours and all the steps that you've put in. So thank you so much. Yeah. One last one. And I think they can leave <laughs> unless you want to stay for, for everything. But it's one of those things that you've put so many hours in. This doesn't have to be one of them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Moving to another kind of uh, recognition and dedication uh, to agenda item 4.1, the board chair report for recovery friendly workplace. Um, let me, I'm going to kind of go into the statement, invite Ellie up. So come on up and introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's nice to see you again. I'm Ellie Mason. I'm a recovery friendly advisor at the New Hampshire Governor's Recovery Friendly Workplace Initiative. Um, I'm the advisor for Summersworth School District. It's been an honor to take this on um, and to, to look forward to all the work ahead um, and, and work closely as your advisor um, after this designation. Great. So I'm happy to present this whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat the the kind of statement from um, from the board in SAU 56 as kind of a recognition and um, in doing this and having this designation again in plain speak, it's kind of what we hold as an important thing to recognize mm -hmm. and to support. And um, we're not making changes to something. It's more of this declaration of. Um, really being uh, recovery aware, recovery friendly, recovery educated, all, all that. So I, here at SAU 56, we recognize that substance use disorder affects many in our community, including our staff, students, and their families. As educators and community leaders, we believe in the power of knowledge and dialogue to create positive change and reduce stigma. We join the city of Summersworth in our declaration of being a recovery friendly workplace and our initiative aims to, one, provide education to our staff, students, and families as appropriate about substance use disorder, recovery, and available support surfaces. surfaces, sir, services. Two, reduce stigma through open, compassionate, and well-informed discussion about substance use disorders. Three, support the overall health and wellness of our school community, recognizing that recovery is part of a broader commitment to well-being. Four, collaborate with local recovery organizations and healthcare providers to ensure access to up-to-date information and resources for our school community. And five, contribute to a more inclusive school community that acknowledges and supports those impacted by substance use disorder. We believe that becoming a recovery-friendly workplace, we can create a healthier, more productive, and supportive environment for all members of our school community. This initiative aligns with our values of education, inclusion, and community support. There will be no policy changes as we maintain our commitment to a drug-free workplace and prioritize staff and student safety. Our goal is to create a culture of mutual respect, understanding, and support while upholding our responsibility to maintain a safe and productive learning and working environment for all. We are the first district in New Hampshire, not that this was our aim to do so, but there's a bravery and a courage to be able to speak about this and have dialogue and reduce stigma. And I think that's actually a life-saving step just in that simple thing to do. Yeah. This is not, um, this is coming out of a love of our community and a supportive kind of what we can do and say and speak openly about it and support. Um, so with that, I know that some board members would like to maybe say things, but should we start with our I would love to present the yes. designation. Perfect. Um, and I couldn't have, I couldn't, the declaration was wonderful. Um, so I'm, you should all be really proud of this. And um, as Maggie mentioned, being the first school district in the state, I can see the wheels turning with other schools that are going to want role models and peers to sort of work this through. Um, so you're not alone. And also you're not alone as a community to work through this. So, um, and our public health recovery and governor's office partners, uh, we're sad to not be here tonight, but they, they also send their well wishes. So I will present it. 
Um, State of New Hampshire by His Excellency Governor T. Sununu presents, uh, g- er, sorry, be it hereby known that go- Christopher T. Sununu, Governor of the State of New Hampshire, presents a recovery-friendly workplace designation to the Summersworth School District. So I brought um, some window stickers for the, I have extras, but for the schools. Um, so when folks walk in the door, they can see this this sort of symbol of being a recovery friendly workplace of this commitment to the school community and the external community. Um, and I also brought some resources on what this means for an employer or an organization, um, as well as some safe language resources that are just quick ways to brush up on reducing stigma. Great. Yeah. Thank you. you can actually give that, um, you can hand it down to a board member, Soldati, and then we'll kind of look at it and take one and pass it along. Sure. Yeah, the official. I would love to present this. Thank you, Ellie. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It's official. Yeah, it's got the stamp on it. It's got the seal on it. Yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions or, um, yeah. you know, come to follow up meetings, anything like that, um, right. providing resources, trainings, things like that. So we, re- we really go from go wherever you want it to be. Um, after the designation of whatever you feel is needed or folks are interested in or would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Open it to the board. Oh, um, yep. Oh, O'Brien Hart followed by Councillor. Um, you know, I'm so proud of our district and so grateful for your help. You know, teachers are superheroes, but we are not superhuman. And I think that having an opportunity to further create work-life balance and to acknowledge that teachers are also people and our staff are people and our administrators everyone is people right (laughs) and um in my 20 plus years in this profession knowing that i have had colleagues over the years struggle with substance use disorder and also their families um students families um, i am so grateful and proud of us that we've taken this step I know I'm the city council rep, but I just have to thank you um, as a person in recovery who is an elected official. It's just another step to break that stigma. And I'm just so proud of the school board for for doing that and helping everyone to see that recovery looks like a lot of different things and that there's always resources to help. So thanks. Yeah, I also just want to sh- I want to first say thank you for coming um, and recognizing us uh, in this capacity. I'm also honored that our school district um, had the courage um, to make this happen and to stand firm in our values here together because this issue is not an individual issue. It is a community issue, and so it takes a community coming together to solve it. Um, I think a lot of times we think of of difficult things as being something we want to hide, something we want to silence, something we want to put in a corner, put it away, don't ever think about it. Um, And that's what shame is. And I think that the only way to deal with shame and to deal with stigma is to talk about it. And it means to talk about it even when we don't know the words yet to talk about it. And the word recovery is a new word in our community. And it is a word that actually means that there are people who have gone through the gauntlet of suffering from substance use and have gotten to the other side. And instead of those seeing those people in our community as, as, uh, as a problem for our community, actually looking to them as assets, that they have wisdom here in the community to help us understand this issue that isn't just local, it's statewide, it's national, and that these people can help us solve these problems. But first, we have to acknowledge that they're here. And so the sticker on the door says that we see you and that we see that any folks who are currently struggling with substance use, that there is a place to get to, that there is hope, and that there can be conversation about that hope. And I think one of the most important things about this being a school district is that we are actually modeling for children and for students what it looks like to take on a difficult uh, challenge in a community. Because a lot of communities would rather hide from this and would rather not talk about it because it would be much easier to not talk about something so challenging. But if we're telling our students and our children in our community that if we don't talk about things, they'll get better, we would be lying to our students. And so we are setting an incredible example as a school district to teach and educate our young people that this is what community looks like, this is what showing up looks like, and this is how you solve problems. So I'm very excited about this and I'm very proud to be on this board. Thank you, Mm -hmm. board member Saldati. 
I couldn't have said it better. Yes, um, Board Member Clark, thank you. I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you, um, Gemma, for wording that so nicely because um, that is so absolutely true, right? We want to make sure that we model for our children. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that. Um, that was just very nicely worded. So thank you for helping us steer this ship this way. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, anyone else? Thank you so much. Well, thank They'll you. Be in touch. Um, we appreciate it. The, the support from um, the governor and governor candidates we've received in this. I think it's a bigger, a bigger, just you know, um, in a, in a bigger perspective at the state level and the local level. I think that even um, when I saw the governor speak, he said when he uh, that the local level is really where change happens, and I think this is an example of that. I think that's Absolutely. a quotable thing. So thank yeah. you, Ellie, and um, yeah. Great. Right. Well, well, congratulations thank again. You. Thanks for thank having you. me. Thank you. All right. Are we gonna take a picture with it? Um, if you'd like to be shared on social media or have something for you all, we're happy to do that. Just for that reminder. For a photo with everyone? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you want to come up and we can step out in front um, if you don't mind? Yep. Here. This is connected, so. You can hold it, Ellie, and then we'll come out. Come in a little bit more. Yeah. Right. All of you. John, you're kind of on the edge. Here we go. Ah! Okay, everything's fine. All right, and I'm going to move here just so I don't. No good? All right, one, two, three. All right, here you go. Thanks, all. Yeah. All right, moving right along, we'll go to our student uh, representative report. Chaplain, welcome, agenda item 4.2. Hello. Uh, so to start things off, uh, of course, fall sports have started, uh, you know, volleyball, football, boys and girls soccer. Um, and so far, they've been doing great. Our volleyball team has been undefeated. Uh, Hodson's not here anymore, but you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been going good so far. Um, and then of course the newly implemented cell phone policy. Uh, I think it's been working well. I haven't seen a phone out at all really. Uh, so it's effective. That's for sure. Um, and then relating to that, uh, our school began handing out these, uh, topper privilege passes, which are rewarded to students that actively follow not just the uh, cell phone policy and our also newly implemented attendance policy which is more so just uh, more strict on attending school uh, but it's also given to people that follow the regular school-wide expectations and whatnot um, and then these passes can allow you to schedule your own flex instead of needing to wait for your advisor um, or other teachers uh, you can go to the cafeteria during uh, the flex time. So it, it, much more freedom. Uh, you can roam the halls much more uh, efficiently. Uh, you know, if you gotta get to the library or something real fast, then you could just head down. You know, it's really, it, it's convenient, that's for sure. Uh, like a Segway or can you use your skateboard? Oh, I wish you could okay. use a Segway. <laughs> is, that, is that gonna be a reward? Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's been working well. Uh, the rewards are definitely, I think, worth it in the end. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then 
lastly, or actually not lastly, but lastly for kind of the uh, past and present here, uh, the uh, NHS National Honor Society um, is currently going through their inductions, um, and then they will be attending two uh, UNH hockey game or uh, football games. Sorry, uh, helping out with concessions. They'll be volunteering at those, uh, and then also I believe they'll be helping out with uh, NH tackles hunger. Um, so yeah, that's really it for NHS stuff. Uh, and then for future events, uh, the 12th, Pumpkin Fest, uh, I believe the class councils and student council and NHS and multicultural club, they're all having their little stands and concessions and one, uh, at the uh, place. Um, on October 14th through the 18th, uh, our school is holding a fall spirit week leading up to our homecoming dance on the 19th. Uh, and then lastly, we have the uh, PSATs on October 22nd. Um, and that's it for high school stuff, but we did get some points, uh, talking points from Maplewood. Uh, for example, on September 6th, uh, the superintendent read to all the students. Uh, the fourth graders had their first field trip to Great Bay Discovery Center, um, and they will be doing NEWA testing, the dreaded NEWA testing, uh, on, from uh, September 23rd to September 27th. Uh, on October 7th, there'll be a flu shot clinic. And lastly, on October 8th and October 9th, the fifth graders will have their first field trip to the Wells Reserve. And that is all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chaplain. All right. Moving to um, agenda item 4.3, our superintendent's report. Um, some of you as uh, school board members that are also parents might have got a text or hopefully got a text and a voice message and an email yesterday afternoon, which was intended both to be a test of our school messenger system um, and also a heads up about the forums that we'll be having in a couple of weeks. Um, we tried to get our best out the text, just so folks know, are limited to 160 characters. Uh, not 160 words, 160 characters, so you can't do that much in those. And based on what School Messenger told us, it seems to have gotten out pretty successfully, but we're encouraging all parents who didn't get it in a form that they were expecting, and maybe hopefully word of mouth, um, parents that didn't get it at all that would like to get um, these alerts, um, they need to, you basically need to contact your school's main office. Um, the forums are being held on Thursday, October 3rd at 6 p.m. at the Summersworth High School Library, on Saturday, October 5th at 10 a.m. at the Idlehurst Library, Idlehurst Elementary School Library, and on Tuesday, October 8th at 1 p.m. In, uh, at the Summersworth Public Library. Um, nobody should come to all three of these, um, <laughs> but you're welcome, but you're welcome, except for me, <laughs> you're welcome to, but I'll be concerned if you're not me, that's uh, asking a lot, or unless maybe you're a school board member. Um, and the point of these is really mostly to listen um, and to hear from folks. Uh, faculty and staff are welcome to attend, but that I, given that I don't know how many parents, and faculty and staff that are parents are welcome to attend as parents. Um, faculty and staff that would like to sit in are welcome to, but we really want to keep the focus on parents and community members. And we're not suggesting Idlehurst families should go to Idlehurst. Anybody should go to any one of the three. We're doing a weekday evening, a weekday day, and a weekend to try to get as many people as possible. And if there are folks that feel they weren't able to make it to any of these, we'll be happy to do it again. Um, but in addition to listening and answering questions, um, I know there's also folks that are kind of eager to hear uh, thoughts about where we are and where we might be headed as we move forward. So we'll do a little bit of that as well. And if these are popular with the community, um, I'd be happy to do more of these regularly, maybe a series of them two or three times a year. Um, uh, for folks that didn't already hear, I think it was Friday or um, that the Teamsters and First Student reached an agreement, um, voted on, done, over, so any possibility um, of a bus strike, at least for the foreseeable future, is behind us. Um, so that is good news. Um, Summersworth Middle School, um, which was part of the SYC uh, program uh, in terms of after-school activities in past years, 
Uh, thanks to the good work of Jan and Jim um, at Summersworth Middle School and a little bit of help from Katie and the district in terms of finding some money, we are going to be able to put an after-school uh, program in place. Um, it's beginning. They're working on it right now. If, it has, if parts of it haven't already started, it will probably be next week, which will include academic enrichment four days a week, Monday through Thursday, um, all year long, and some activities uh, such as eSports, um, chess, volleyball, girls on the run, things of that nature. Um, and we hope to see good numbers, um, you know, 20, 30, 40 or more students participating as this goes forward. Um, and just a reminder that uh, per the school board vote last go around, um, we have added a uh, sixth kindergarten classroom and a sixth kindergarten teacher effective yesterday. Um, we brought the candidate on early um, so that she could begin working with the rest of the team. Um, official uh, hiring process will take place because uh, her certificate of eligibility is coming through any day now, and then we'll make the official hire from a long-term substitute in that role. But uh, it's been hectic, but Liza reported. She, Liza called all the parents that were moving to the new classroom individually, and they were overwhelmingly uh, positive and felt good about it. Um, and you know, basically getting class sizes smaller. And most students are staying in the class they were already in. We obviously didn't shuffle everything. We just pulled some students from each of the five existing classes to create a sixth. We were not able to get a sixth uh, classroom aid so that the new class is a little bit smaller to compensate for the fact that we don't have a full-time aid in there. Um, but all told, um, things went pretty well. I think that's it, unless there's any questions about other matters. Yep, question. Yep. So, not other matters, but I have some questions. Um, so, with that forum, is that going to be posted on the SAU Facebook page and Instagram for our communities or the schools? Do we know? Yeah. Posted. I've got Just it for. This. I'll do everything possible um, to get it out. There's okay. Whole so that's idea. great for parents to see. I know we like to think the emails, and, but oh, for no, some no, reason, no. It, like Instagram and Facebook. Um, and the after school program, is there a cost associated with that for parents? No. Okay. Thank you. And then, perfect. Thanks. Anyone else? Any other things about superintendent report? All right. Seeing none, we don't have a business administrator report this evening. So, agenda item 4.5, our city council update, Councilor Parity Canton Zero. Yeah, uh, not much to report uh, as relates to the school board, um, but I do just want to plug for the communications and community outreach committee if there's anything that ever crosses over that you feel like um, should be shared with the broader city, let us know. Um, and we're in contact with the city staff about uh, putting that stuff up on the website. I um, think what the superintendent of forums, that would be a great one to share. Yeah, yeah, to, I think to, to we'll, we'll follow it. that lead and, and share once, once that is up, because that sounds great. But yeah, other than that, just happy to hear all these reports. It sounds like everything's off to a really good school year. Great, all right. So our committee reports, our standing committee, um, Budget and Revenue uh, will be meeting on um, October 15th, um, and so we have not met. Building Grounds and Transportation has n has not met, right? Yep. Um, educa ed educational Programs and Community Outreach has not met. Um, policy has absolutely met prior to this meeting. Is there, we are, we do have policies to go over, but a policy update from um, earlier this evening, Board Member Brown? Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to be brief. Um, in looking at the agenda, it lists um, the October 22nd, but I know on my calendar I have one for October 1st because we've got a lot of, so that's just one, one um, thing to, uh, to uh, add to our. Okay. So I'm not going to dive into the policies or um, subject to first reading and second reading, but I will just remind folks that these policies with all their weird acronyms come from the New Hampshire School Boards Association and we are tackling a number of priority ones that are in the category of A, which is foundations and basic commitments. So we've um, today did some revisions to the policy ACAC, which I will discuss when we are talking about that policy because what's in your packet is uh, has been s since revised in our policy meeting that we just had at 545 to 640 and 
I'm going to strike, I'm going to ask that, in the, that we're going to strike that through because we'll have to have the revised v version to have a first reading because the board, board members haven't been able to read it. There were minor edits, but yes. They I were minor? Think. Okay, if they weren't substantive, then well, that's fine. It's like clear to gold. Okay, okay, this not like changing the, I mean, it's, mm -mm. it's up to you if that's fine. All right. Yeah, I was going to read them into the record. Um, okay, the, the perfect. Changes. perfect. It is a 26 page policy. But we are um, uh, having some challenging meetings, but everyone is stepping up. And I am just so grateful that we covered very well and thoroughly four different policies tonight. And it's a, a testament to CAT's organization. It is great to have an official assistant superintendent <laughs> um, helping us with that admin staff. Greatly appreciate that. And all of our, um, you know, the administrators are just um, very well versed when they come to these meetings. And so we are getting these policies processed. And when I say processed, the legislature was very active last year. Um, well, up until, what, May when they left. Um, and so we've got quite a to-do list to process through. Um, but as Kat reminded us at our meeting, that even though we may not have the policy in place, the law has changed, whether it's at the federal mm -hmm. level or at the state level. So the law is the law and has to be um, complied with. But it, it's, it behooves us to just get our policies up to date because it is a mechanism for our administrators and people dealing with these policies to be familiar with them. Mm -hmm. So there's that education part to it. Uh, we are set to next meet on October 1st, October 22nd, November 12th. But then we had our proposed meeting on the 12th, uh, I'm sorry, December 3rd, but we understand that that's a conflict with the budget meeting. And so we will need to reschedule that. We had December 17th as a placeholder, but um, that may not be a placeholder anymore. We may need to <laughs> have that meeting if we can't find a, a different date for uh, the uh, rescheduled December 3rd. For our next meeting, we will be discussing um, policy ACN, which is the nursing, nursing mother's accommodation because there was a law change for that. We will be discussing ADB, which is the drug-free workplace and a drug-free schools uh, policy. In addition to policy GBAM, which is another new policy because of a law change, accommodation of pregnancy and, medic and related medical conditions. And then the other policy we hope to tackle also is a new policy, JLDBB, which is suicide prevention and response plan. So that's what we'll be working on. Wonderful. That's a lot of work. I appreciate the policy committee so very much. It is a lift. Huge. It is grad school plus sometimes PhD insight into wording. And it's it's one of those things that um, all the work that is put into it, all these required by law, how we, cr that we, it's almost like you're drowning in it, but it's so worthy to do. And it's, I appreciate everyone's time and efficiency and kind of getting it done. I think the majority are required by law, so there's not a lot of like room for our own interpretation of certain things, so I really appreciate that. All right, um, our Eyes on 30 City Committee Board Liaison, uh, Board Liaison Saldati. Uh, we haven't met okay. since our last uh, school board meeting. Okay, great. There's no presentation this evening, so we'll move into policy adoption. We have two for first reading and two for second reading. Um, I don't think, it is a 22 page policy, so um, maybe with some minor, board member Wentworth, go for it. I move to read this policy by title only. Second. Okay. <laughs> All right, can you, would you mind amending your, your for each one? Would you wanna do one for each one or do you wanna do a do policy one chair? One. Do you want it to be for each one or policies by title only? As long as I can, Make some comments. Absolutely. On them yep. After I. Yep. Read just though we don't have to have a motion for each one, I think Thank we can you. read poli these policies. I motion to read the following titles by, nope, the following policies yep. by title only: uh, AC, AC, ACA, AC, ACR2. Okay. Do you have a second? 
Second. All right. Any dis any discussion why we do this? Because it's 22 pages and 20, 20 pages. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. I'll start with agenda item 7.1, which is a policy ACAC. Uh, the full title is Title IX Prohibition of Sex Discrimination and Sex-Based Harassment Policy and Grievance Process. Um, technically, it's a 26-page document that you've got before you. It, Although it is for um, first reading, um, our policy committee had some, some clear, what we consider clerical t uh, tweaks to that. Mm. And if I can draw your attention to page three of the policy under days, which is in the definition section, the way the definition section for days read, or I'm sorry, the way the definition of days is, it looked like it included the weekends. And mm. so we don't think weekends were included, were intended to include, so we have revised days to mean, quote, days, end quote, shall mean Monday through Friday calendar days, comma, and then the rest stays the same in that. Okay. That was one clarification. We didn't think it was substantive. We thought it was just consistent because you don't want to count. No one, norm, no, more, no one normally counts Saturday and Sunday as a... Mm -hmm. as a, a calendar day when they're counting, you know, notices of this sort. Okay. Then on page 18, under time frames, paragraph D, time frames, we change the number one that the evaluation of the complaint is to be done in three days. We thought it would be best to do evaluate in five days. Mm. And then number three, evidence organization and summarization, summarization of the investiga by investigator, we thought five days was too short and we wanted to extend that to 10 days. Again, we considered the substance is still gonna be done, that we thought that the days was more of a clerical. Is, that, is there any reference to having a time frame that was like pointed in the in the requirement or in the title, is this to all Title IX? Yeah, okay, Kat. This is to all Title IX, yeah. Yeah, there actually isn't a set time frame. Districts are left to um, do that in this new policy, but it's just to be reasonable amount of time. Perfect, great, thank you. And Kat, if I can just expand on that, didn't you say that with this policy, you just cut and pasted our time frame from the last policy and dumped it in here? I believe that's what I did. I had numbers that were already pre-done from the last policy, but um, in the training that I intended, it was very clear that there doesn't have to be set days, just a reasonable amount of time. And so we thought, given that the school board had already approved the, you know, these one through whatever with the dates, uh, with the, you know, three days, five days, whatever, um, that we would keep that. Okay. Um, with, just with those two modifications. And then the, you'll notice on uh, pages 23 and 24, there's a bracket and ellipsis reference mm -hmm. to the student code of conduct. We took away the brackets and we took away the ellipsis because yes, there is a student code of conduct and yes, there is a student handbook. Okay. Yeah. And yes, Perfect. there is other comprehensive list of conduct and discipline standards. Mm -hmm. So okay. that affected tw uh, uh, pages 23 and 24. So right. those we considered as a, policy committee to nope. be just more clerical, not changing the substance of this. So we would appreciate um, the school board's consideration of those, even though this is um, in a first reading. That's perfect, yep. Yeah. No, that that's great. That's for ACAC. All right, any questions about this policy? It's under first read. It'll be at our next board meeting for second read and adoption. All right, we can move to 7.2, ACA. Okay, agenda item 7.2 is the first reading of a brand new policy, policy ACA. The title is Discrimination and Harassment Grievance Procedure. By way of background, this is for the non-Title IX complaints. Mm -hmm. We, again, this is for a new policy, it's for first reading. We did take the days definition that was in the policy ACAC and add it to this under the definition section because this didn't define the days. And we found some internal inconsistencies where they were referring to days and then working days. Mm. So there were eight working days that we replaced with days to then track back to the definition so that the definition of days is consistent under the policy ACAC. 
and the policy ACA. And we liked the symmetry of it because if you've got one person or one group handling these, you want similarity in the timing because otherwise there's some confusion about which, which complaint process are you following. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have kind of a all-in-one that covers the grievances, I think it's um, a better process for the people that have, actually have to implement it. So that was the only changes that we made to the policy ACA first reading in your packet. Right. Can I go on to, yes. oh, is there any mm -hmm. questions about Any questions about ACA clarifications at first read, and then we're moving on to our um, two policies for adoption now. Yep. Yes, so agenda item 7.3, second reading, policy AC, which is the non-discrimination, equal opportunity, opportunity employment, and anti-discrimination plan. Do we have a motion regarding the adoption of AC non-discrimination equal opportunity employment and anti-discrimination plan required by law confirmation? Yep. I motion to accept oh. title or AC non-discrimination equal opportunity employment and district anti-discrimination plan as presented. Does it say district in there? Maybe. Oh. Anti-discrimination. Is your mic on? It is not. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, round two. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I motion to accept the policy non discrimination, equal opportunity employment, and district anti discrimination plan. Do I have a second? Presented. Okay. Do I have a second? So I, just, I need some clarity. Um, I don't see district in that title. No. It says, it says and Oh, on the policy, so just on not written policy. on the. Oh, okay, it's not okay. on the, it's not our. Thank our, you for that clarity. On our, our agenda, but perfect, okay. Um, I second. Second. Any discussion about this? It is, it is lengthy. Mm -hmm. And I think, wow, I mean, this is, um, all right, uh, all in favor of adopting AC as presented. Say aye. 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 Okay. All right, it's accepted. It's just how how do we roll this out for this? I mean, it is, it's one of our first ones to be adopted, right? One of our first policies of the school year. How does uh, this becomes policy as of now, right? So what's... Yeah, so I'm actually, I've put together a training that I'll be um, conducting with all staff members um, this fall so that they're aware of the new policy and the changes to the Title IX policy as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, moving on, 7.4. Agenda item 7.4, second reading for policy ACR parentheses 2. Again, we've revised this on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but... The policy dis uh, title is Non-Discrimination, Equal Opportunity Employment, and Anti-Discrimination Plan, Annual Notice of Contact Information. So this is a notice. And since our last meeting and, and your viewing of this, um, Kat Crosby has had more put, <laughs> has had her, uh, Kat, do you want to just explain what you are now doing? <laughs> sure. So um, human rights officer is um, a role that a district does not technically have to have. So we had removed that. But in the creation of ACA, um, which is the discrimination uh, and harassment policy, non-Title IX, um, those can be handled. At, districts can decide who handles those um, grievance procedures, whether it's building administration or district. And it's been decided I'll handle those so, so that at the public and everyone knows the delineation between Title IX coordinator and the other. I'm also being added the title of human rights officer so that people know either one you would report to me. So we felt it important to add that in there just so it's clear for the community who you would contact um, as well. And then also with the 504, we also had to add ADA coordinator to that as well because it serves both roles it's for, for Leanda Corman. And so it's accurate with what's in your packet but i just want to make Perfect. you know the public aware that even though this is, this is second reading there were more uh changes um and and again as kat described no i or for the notice 
That's just for the clarification, not the, the substance of it. All right. Do we have a motion to accept AC-R um, as presented? Make a motion to adopt ACR parentheses two um, as presented. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion about this? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It is adopted. All right. Moving to new business, a 8.1, our proposed change of a teacher workshop day from March 21st, 2025 to March 14th, 2025. You have the calendar in your packet if that if that's at all helpful, but uh, quite simply, um, the proposed change is to remove our March 21st, it's a Friday, March 21st teacher workshop day, uh, have that be a school day, and move the teacher workshop day to March 14th, a week earlier on a Friday, which is currently a school day, will now be a teacher workshop day. Um, I think we've successfully checked with everybody um, involved whether or not that would work, including transportation. Um, uh, we, we know that we may have some folks that made plans that will kind of sort that out, whether that's students or faculty or staff, but uh, that far in advance. Um, the reason the change makes difference is because uh, Dover and Rochester both have the teacher workshop day on March 14th, so it's one less day that we're misaligned for the CTC. Um, we have to keep that under 10, which we are, but we always want to try to minimize it to the greatest extent possible. And the more critical piece was that Stratford Learning Center does uh, a professional day, um, and we were going to be out of line with that, which would mean that on our school day, we would lose our SLC staff, and on the professional workshop day, we would lose the professional workshop opportunity unless some of our teachers and staff took the day as a professional day. Um, so I'm not quite clear how it ended up uh, accidentally on the 21st uh, rather than the 14th, but we couldn't find any reason. So we're hoping we'd have a motion to make that change. And we will obviously redo the calendars, revise the calendars, reissue the calendars, and communicate this broadly and wild, uh, widely now, and then as we get closer to March, just to make sure nobody's working from an old calendar. Okay, yep, Board Member Clark, question? Yes, um, do we need to suspend rules to move us along? Do we need we do. to, okay. We do need a, we need a motion to suspend rules to kind of uh, adopt this because it's under new business, but obviously um, if there's any discussion about this or questions or clarity, it's, it's in line now, these things happen. Thank goodness we found it sooner than later. Um, but yeah, I'd look for a motion to suspend rules. To I be motion able to, to suspend rules to be able to adopt this change. Change for Second. workshop day. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, looking for a motion to, ad to adopt the proposed change to teacher workshop day from the March 21st, 2025 to the 14th, 2025. Motion. I motion to adopt the change to teacher workshop day March 21st, 2025 to March 14th, 2025. Yeah, I have the notice. Second? Second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion about this? Thanks for um, realizing this. These things happen. I do not know why. I don't know why, but I'm glad we caught it. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We have adopted it. There's no old unfinished business. I'm going to ask all the chairs again to kind of look to the at least the end of the calendar year to get meetings on the books. And once you have them on the books, remember you can talk to your entire committee to schedule a meeting. It's the only time that you can talk to them. It's just a schedule. So you can talk to the quorum. A quorum of a committee is two um, because there's um, committee meetings of three. And uh, just try to get some on the books. If there's absolutely nothing to talk about, have a small meeting. Maybe there will be half an hour. We're looking even for policy. Unbelievable, you get that much work done in 45 minutes, but an hour, be prepared to make decisions and deliberate at that um, meeting. Otherwise, um, no need, except for maybe building and grounds to kind of take tours and things like that. That's a, that's a worthy, that's a worthy one. Our next meeting is October 15th at 7 p.m. Agenda item number 11, any comments by visitors this evening? I see none. Any comments by board members this evening? Anyone? Yep. Um, agenda item 13. Talk about it. 
I think per 91A32C, if we can make that change to C, um, I look for a non public motion to go into non public. Change it to C, please. You want me to, I'll make a motion that we oh, go, yes. go into non public under RSA 91A uh, colon 3, Roman 2, C. C. Second. Okay. Can I ro roll call, please? Maggie Larson? Yes. Carrie Clark? Yes. Sarah O'Brien Hart, yes. Crystal D. St. Croix, yes. Marsha Brown, yes. Barbara Wentworth, yes. Bridget Jamison, yes. Gemma Soldati, 